just mentioned cluster bombs. I mean, the Israelis are using those too. Um, there are a lot of people saying that the phosphorus weapons, these are grounds enough for the U.S. to make the case that there uh, are violations of the law taking place, um, just simply on the level of what weapons you use. And as a weapons supplier to Israel, that gives Congress some leverage, some uh, some um, possibility, at least, of saying this is in violation of our own U.S. law. Is there um, a case to be made there? Well, I mean, with Gaza, we have not documented Israel's use of cluster munitions in Gaza. And I have not heard that they have used them yet in Gaza. They obviously used them extensively uh, in, uh, its, in their war with South Lebanon in 2006. And in fact, that was the basis for um, what resulted in the global ban, the global push to ban cluster munitions. Um, at that time, the United States did just that. Both the Department of Defense and the Department of State um, called Israel to task for violating the terms under which they had provided Israel cluster munitions that they not be used in civilian areas um, and, in fact, suspended the shipment of further cluster munitions during the war. Um, the matter was largely dropped since then, but I think the, 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 the shout was heard across um, the bow and that the United States, as much as it will ever dis express displeasure of Israeli policies, did express mm. very strong uh, displeasure, if privately, uh, of Israel's conduct uh, in use of uh, cluster munitions. Again, many of the sources that a lot of us are reading are blogs and personal accounts, partly because the journalists aren't in there. Uh, clearly, all this stuff needs to be confirmed. Local residents are the ones who are saying they think cluster weapons are being used, as well as the white phosphorus. Um, wasn't it true that Israel uh, agreed to let in international observers in the last period, which is to say they should be being allowed in now? And what's happened to that agreement? This level of media ban uh, and monitoring ban in Gaza in, in a wartime situation um, is unprecedented, uh, unprecedented by Israel and in the region, I must say. Obviously, it's not unprecedented worldwide. Um, and I think it very much reflects the lesson Israel feels it learned from the 2006 war where there was extensive media coverage refuting almost on a daily basis the propaganda that the Israel Defense Forces were putting out in terms of what they were targeting and how they were targeting it. Um, throughout the war, Israel continued to claim that the reason civilians were dying in Lebanon was because uh, Hezbollah was shielding, using civilians to defend themselves from attack. Um, and day after day, our reporting, as well as reporting of, of uh, journalists and other observers, would refute that. Um, which show and document that that just wasn't true. There was no evidence of that, and that places where civilians were dying had no military activity by Hezbollah or any other armed group. Um, they don't want that to happen this time. They want to control the narrative. They want to control um, the flow of information. And in fact, that's very much what you're seeing. You're seeing them saying, this is what's happening. And you're seeing groups like us saying, well, all we know is we don't know. So we can't take at face value what the Israeli uh, defense forces are saying. We've got less than a week now um, before the inauguration of Barack Obama. How do you think the new administration will be when it comes to receiving the kinds of uh, complaints, petitions, and uh, cases, arguments that groups like yours make? Well, I hope um, that there's reason to hope for change and that the United States will be more receptive to what its uh, major ally and major recipient of U.S. aid is doing uh, with uh, its weapon and with its aid. Um, you know, money is fungible as are weapons. Um, but I can't be for certain that there's going to be a change because, as, as everyone knows, this is a very tough issue in Washington, and it's a very politically sensitive one that I'm not confident uh, President-elect Obama will want to use his political capital on um, so early on in his presidency, mm -hmm. um, taking on the uh, issue of Israel, taking on uh, a reflection and a review of whether or not our policy with respect to Israel is a sensible one for U.S. strategic interests um, or under you know, international law, human rights law, ethical con considerations um, is a very, very tough issue to handle in the political climate we have. Um, finally, we do have the inauguration coming up. That's going to probably take people's attention off what's happening in Gaza, at least for a while, at least people in this country. Globally, it's a very different story. Um, as a human rights activist and, and organizer yourself, somebody who works on these issues on a daily basis and somebody who I know, we went to Lebanon together, you know, in, 1980, in 1996. You've been working on this for a long time. How do you fear, as I do perhaps, that the U.S. public who always, as you just say, find this a difficult topic, um, are gradually going to become inured to the pictures that we're seeing from Gaza in the same way that many people have become inured to the pictures that we see from from Iraq, uh, and if so, what price?
could be extracted from the people of Gaza while we're not paying attention. What is happening there? Well, what's happening there is uh, uh, an incredible deprivation of the civilian population. Um, they uh, don't have food uh, in sufficient quantities. They don't have medicine in sufficient quantities. They're receiving electricity uh, less than a few hours a day. There is no safe place in Gaza. There is no place for people to flee the fighting. Um, they are uh, literally in a cage that they can't get out of, and they're being shot at uh, in terms of the fighting that's going on. In terms of U.S. public opinion, uh, I think you're right that generally people have little interest and, and will become inured just as Iraq has completely fallen off the map, even though there is still a war going on in that country, and, and that seems to be a non-issue. Um, I can only say that as a result, there might be more room for policymakers to make the uh, kinds of changes and, and take the approach they need to take, um, recognizing that it's not the highest priority issue for um, the public. So almost they could make more change if the public wasn't paying attention. Well, possibly, or, or, or it being less an issue that's subject to political manipulation among uh, uh, the public minds. Meanwhile, we're just hearing screams of agony from Gaza. How do you process that yourself? Well, it is uh, uh, very difficult. Um, the father of our consultant in Gaza was killed a week and a half ago, uh, killed by an Israeli attack on his farm. Uh, he was a judge, uh, and a Fatah judge, uh, and serving in legal capacity um, his entire life. Um, we had provided the GPS coordinates of his house and his family's house to the Israelis, but not of the farm, um, which happened to be at the border. So there is a very personal toll. Uh, our uh, consultant's wife is due to give birth any day. Across the street from his house, the building was knocked down. They fled to their aunt's house. Um, the building next to that was uh, knocked down. They don't know how they're going to be able to get to a hospital. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a very direct, upfront sense of, of the uh, horrific circumstances that people are living in right now. Mm. You can get more information about Human Rights Watch's reports on what's happening in Gaza and elsewhere at their website. There's a link at our website. Sarah Lee Whitson, thanks so much, so much for joining us here on Grid TV. Keep up the great work.